The message is going up high in part two. <laughs> Amen. We're going up high in church. Amen. Amen. We live in a society where uh, skepticism, and, uh, they question whether God is real, uh, where's the God of the miracles. You know, most people look at the Bible as a storybook. And so the Red Sea experience and all the things you see in the Bible to them are not really real. Amen. They're just fairy tales. Amen. And, and if you're a believer that believes that, then you're lost. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible is infallible, undeniable. Amen. It's the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. And what he said happened, happened. And the thing that happened then will happen now for those who really believe. Amen. Amen. So God wants to give us a supernatural exchange. But you got to want more. You, you got to be hungry for God. Amen. You, you got to be hungry for God like you get hungry for Popeye's chicken. See, I got to get down on your level so you can understand what I'm talking about. You know, I'm going to talk about Popeye's chicken. You can taste the rice. My God. Amen. You got to want more. I want you to go over the book of Revelations, amen, the fourth chapter. I'm not going to hold you long, but I promise you we'll make you strong. Revelations, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start at the first verse. I want you to say, I want more. I want more. Say it again like you mean. I want more. Amen. We want more of God. Amen. Revelation 4 and 1, it says, after these things, let me have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your holy word. I give you the right to speak through me. Think through me. Speak to your people. Unhindered, unchecked by any force. We give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor for it. In the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all the citizens of this great kingdom say amen. 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 After these things, I look and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard, was like a trumpet speaking to me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. And that's my verse of scripture I want to talk to you about. He said, come up here. I said, let's go up high. So let me say this. Your level of light determines by what's attracted to you. What is God attracted to? Capacity. Who said that, bitch? I'm going to get you fired out. Okay. Paying attention. Amen. God is attracted to capacity. Ideas attract what? Reese, who said that? Yeah, Greg, you got five. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Ideas attract resources. Amen. Everything in this house, everything you have on, started as an idea. Yeah. That's right. From the beanie on Tierra's head to the tie around my neck. It all started as an idea. God gives us ideas all the time. We just don't do anything with it. But he said he'll give us witty inventions if we expect them. So whatever you attract, your level also determines what happens to you. If you find yourself in a pit, you 90% of the time you're going to attract a bunch of trash. The reason why is because trash flows into holes and pits and places of that nature. What you say, low life? Who said that? I said low life. I can't say low life. Praise God. A pit is where the flood washes all sorts of unwanted material and trash down. Yeah. So if there's a lot of trash attracted to you, you need to get out of the pit. Let me say that again. If there's a lot of trash being attracted to you, when I say trash, I'm just talking about people don't want nothing in life. You know what I'm talking about. 
if you attracting those kind of people, then you may check the, the area. You may be standing in the pit. But I want you to notice that he told the door, he, the door was open. He said, I saw a door was open. So the significance of a door being open is there's no restrictions, no limitations. Right? That door was open. And that door is open to the body of Christ today. God has opened that door. And he's also given us a command to come up high. In other words, God is calling us to live in a different place. Live on another level. We got to stop living on that low level. We're so used to living casual. Let me tell you what casual means. Relax and unconcerned. I'm going to say that again. People who live casually live relaxed and unconcerned. They live with no urgency whatsoever. If that's you, you're in a bad place. We don't want to live casually. But we got to have a relationship that's distinct. See, God is calling us to, to come up here. To come up to a higher place. He, you know, Christianity is not going through the motions. It's an intimate relationship with Almighty God. And that's what God desires, intimacy. He wants a relationship. You know, if you, if you develop a relationship with some other person, a relationship, you got to spend time with each other. And if you get intimate the first day, you don't even value the relationship. I'm just going to tell you the truth. You may say you do, but you're lying. You know, like my mom used to say, that, that child is too fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because intimacy takes time. Time to get to know one another. See, you got to be intimate with God. You got to spend time. You can tell when people get intimate with God because their lifestyle changes. Their relationship changes. Their worship changes. You don't have to encourage them to worship. They, they just sense the presence of God. They just enter in. Some of us, we can't enter in worship because we're still struggling with who we are. Struggling with our identity. Struggling with who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. God is calling us to another place. The door was open. No restrictions, no limitations. Nobody's not going to be denied. You may have to leave some stuff behind. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're going to have to let some stuff go. You can't go in there with all that stuff. Some of that stuff the other was talking about. You can't go in with that stuff. you got to let that stuff go. Some of that stuff you've been holding too long. And it's weighing you down. And even though you want to go up, there's weights that's holding you down. So God says, I want you to let that stuff go. Let it go. I know it's been a long time. It started in childhood. I know your parents didn't do you right. I know you know they didn't treat you like you thought you ought to be treated. But guess what? You got to let that go. I know they weren't the best caregivers in the world. They didn't cover you. They didn't protect you. So now you become a guard to yourself. Now you got to protect yourself because your caregivers didn't protect you. The things that happened to you, it wouldn't have happened if they would have been protecting you. And now you've got to blame everybody for your situation. But let me tell you this. It's not what you go through. It's how you respond. It's how you handle what you go through. God says, I know you've been through trial. But I could bring you out and use what you've been through to help somebody else come through. Yeah. But stop being mad with yourself and with everybody else. You had no control over that. Some, some of that stuff just flowed into your life. Some of that stuff you invited in. Amen. The stuff you invited in, you need to repent for. Amen. The, f the stuff you flow, then God forgives you for it because it wasn't your fault. So stop beating yourself up for stuff you had no control of. But God is saying, I'm giving you a chance to come up here. 
I've given you an open door, and now I'm calling you to come up, to live on a different level. I, I want you to go with me to 2 Kings, because I want you to see the desire to want more. 2 Kings. And most of you might be familiar with the story. But this was Elijah was about to go into glory. God was going to call him into heaven. Second chapter, second Kings. And so he had a young man that was following him around. Elijah was following Elijah. And so Elijah was training him. Like the Holy Spirit is training us. And the only difference between us and Elisha was Elisha followed Elijah everywhere he went. And we would learn to follow the Holy Spirit everywhere he leads us. Lord have mercy. We would have great results in ministry and in everything else. But we've not learned how to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We need to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, lead me, teach me, guide me. Second chapter, it says, it came to pass that when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with him, Elisha, from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. Now Bethel means the house of God. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, as my soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel together. Now what he was really saying is, I need more. I need more of your spirit. I'm not equipped to separate from you. I need you. I, I need everything that you offer. I need everything you can give me. I need everything you can deposit in my life to prepare me for where I'm going. So he said, I'm not going to leave you. Now the sons of the prophet who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and they said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And Elisha said, I know, but keep silent. In other words, be quiet. I know exactly what's happening. And Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please. For the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. Now, he's telling him to stay in Bethel. Now, let me just tell you about Bethel. Bethel was given over to idolatry, lust, homosexuality, skepticism. Let me just tell you what skepticism is. It's the doubt as to what the truth of something is. They, they were full of disbelief. That means that certain knowledge was in that's what the church is today. They don't believe in the supernatural. The reason why we don't see miracles today is nobody talk about it. Because it's a story to them. It's a fairy tale. You are not going to see the miraculous unless you're expecting it. Unless you're believing for it. How many believe in miracles today? I'm not just talking about believing it. People say they believe. I'm talking about really exercising your faith to see the supernatural. Because God is a supernatural God. He'll give you a supernatural exchange. But if you've been taught that that stuff don't work for today, then you've been sold your life. They've sold skepticism into your life. Disbelief about the God of miracles. He's a miracle worker. And so Bethel was full of unbelief. Bethel represents the evil society we have become. Scoffers and mockers, people making fun of God. You talk about the Holy Spirit stuff, people start looking at you kind of sideways. Because they don't believe that stuff. You know, at that time, and you, we, listen, this city or this society we live in, Bethel had nothing on. There ain't nothing on us. 
Not with the gay community we got today. All the stuff that's going on today, I said, definitely have nothing on us. You got to have uh, metal detectors in our schools. Kids are being shot by other kids. All kinds of stuff are happening. Bethlehem had none of that going on. But they had some scoffers and some mockers and the children made fun of the work of the Holy Ghost. That's why 42 children, 42 boys were mauled to death by two female bears because they made fun of God's man. Go up, you bald head man. And God said, I'm not going to tolerate that foolishness. But that's the God of miracles. That's the God we serve. But listen, God says, I need you to come up higher because you're living on such a low level, you'll never believe for the miraculous. Mm -hmm. You'll never see the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit on your life until you come up here. You can't live casual. If you live casual, you're going to become a casualty. God is calling us to come up higher. See, I'm living in the supernatural. And I've been living here for a long time. So I expect miracles to happen. Hallelujah. I expect to see the supernatural. Because that's what God called us to. Yeah. To live Jesus. in the supernatural. Amen. To walk in the miraculous. Hallelujah. To see God move in our lives. Yes. Yes. When you go, people ought to get saved. They ought to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You ought to be able to impart wisdom to them. Hmm. We're carrying the message of eternal life. Who are you sharing it with? Or are you just spiritual fat babies? <laughs> Overweight. Spiritual. And not sharing it with anyone. We're called to share our faith. To demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, Elisha knew one thing. I'm not prepared to deal with Bethel and no other place until I get everything I can get from you. He left Bethel, he went over to another place. The boy said, I'm not leaving, I'm going with you. He said, I'm going over to Jericho. He said, well, if you're going to Jericho, I'm going with you. Jericho means a pleasant place. He went with him to Jericho. He told him, stay in Jericho. God is sending me to Jordan. Elisha said, no, I'm going with you to Jordan. Yes. Jordan means to flow down, uh -huh. praise God. See, Elisha knew that if I'm going to go and do ministry, then I need everything you got on your life. And I'm telling you, if you're going to be effective in ministry, you're going to need everything the Holy Ghost can put on your life. So the next place they got, Elisha told him, he said, what you want me to do for you? In other words, I can't get rid of you. So what do you want? He said, I want a double portion of what's on your life. Wow. A double portion. And this is what Elisha told me. He said, if you see me when I leave, then God will grant it. But if you don't see me, you won't get it. The Bible says he saw it when God took him up in the whirlwind. And he got that double portion on his life. God promises us a double portion. But you're going to have to come up here. You're going to come out of your casual living. Out your religion. And come into relationship. Come into an intimate walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he'll give you that double portion. Right after Elisha got caught up, the Bible said Elisha went and they said, come, because the water's here bitter. He told him, bring me a bowl with some salt in it. The Bible says he went and took the salt and threw it where the source came from. And the waters turned sweet again. Right after that, those 42 young men were mauled to death because they made fun of God's man. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that God wants to bring that double portion on the church. But in order to get it, we've got to come up higher. We've got to rise be below that ground where we've been living on, on the level ground, where we're compromised and casual and comfortable in our discomfort. We've got to be willing to want more. He didn't settle for less, and neither will I. 
God wants to give us that supernatural exchange. You say, well, God only used certain people. No, God will use whoever make themselves available. God's not looking for golden vessels. He's not looking for silver vessels. He's only looking for yielded vessels. If you yield to God, he'll use you. He'll use you to minister to healing, to deliverance, to salvation. He'll use you for everything. He'll use you to his glory. Do you believe that? Because God wants to use all of us. There's nobody special in here. Not from the pulpit down to the back row. Everybody's special in his eyes. He died for all of us. He'll use the alcoholic. He'll use the drug addict. He'll use whoever will make themselves available to him. When you believe for the supernatural, God will give you supernatural exchange. I want you to know this concert is a supernatural exchange. I was talking to a young man who does concerts and stuff, and he told me, he said, let me ask you this. How did you get Fred Hammond, who was an icon in gospel music, and all these other artists, how could you get them to come here? And I've been doing this all my life, and I, I hadn't been able to do anything like that. I said, obviously, you don't know the God I serve. Yeah. And it's obvious the God I serve is not the same God you serve. Because God opened that door for us. But God will use whoever makes themselves a failure. You step out there in faith, you believe for the miraculous, God will show up and show out. Because God is attracted to what? Capacity. You empty? You're perfect candidate for God to fill. He's looking to fill up everything empty. Some of y'all ain't empty though. Y'all full of stuff. Like my mom used to say, full of stuff. And she didn't say stuff. But I'm telling you, if you're empty, you're, you're qualified for God to fill you up. So if you can't come to the concert, it's going to be miraculous. I'm promise you. I'm praying for God to drop a manna on the whole building. Amen. Supernatural manifestation. I know I might be out of time, but I'm not out of insight. Amen. I'm not out of revelation. I promise you this, though. God is going to take this place to another, this church to another place. Yes. Amen. We're going up high, church. And let me say this. The air is thin when you get up high. Get a call no people. Right. If you ain't ready to go up higher, huh. you may not be able to breathe when you get up there. Oh. So it's important that you prepare yourself for the trip. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? Amen.